Uh, this song is called Three Men on a Mountain. Uh, I bet you can guess which three men they are on the mountain. And we're about ready. Monday that you called me. 
And I said, uh, because every time somebody asked me to preach, I said, always yes. But then later that night, as we decided when to fly to the Philippines, we have to fly tomorrow morning. Oh. I said, I should have not said yes to Pastor John. But I gotta take back what I have said yes. Amen. So we have to drive from Tennessee this morning at 5 just to get here for the appointment. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we have to come here. And tonight, we will go, be going to uh, Knoxville because our flight is early tomorrow. Oh. But anyway, it's, it's good to be here. I know that we're enjoying, the fathers are enjoying that you got your presence. Mm -hmm. And I think it's up for us now to enjoy the anyway. What time is it now? It's 11.50. 50. What time do you want us to be done? We try to be around 12:30-ish, whatever. Okay. As always, early. Okay, that, that's good. That's good. Okay then. Uh, shall we have a word of prayer? Oh Lord God, this morning we thank you so much for this time that we could be here. As we have been excited, the Lord, among the many parts of the programs that we have been witnessed today. Help us, O oh God, to get excited with your word. Help us, O oh Lord, to feel hungry and thirsty. Help us, O oh Lord, to be filled because your promise is only for those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. And this morning, O oh Lord, I just pray, please let me become, O oh Lord, a, 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 an instrument in your hand. And I pray, O oh Lord, that even if I am not that qualified, O oh God, to bring the message today, I just pray, O oh God, that you please cleanse me from all kind of unrighteousness, and let, O oh Lord, your, your seraphim touch me with a full of fires from the altar, and I with my lips, O oh Lord. And according to your promise to Jeremiah, let your words be put on my mouth that your people will hear and understand the message. Thank you, dear Lord, for granting us all the blessings. We ask all these favors in Jesus' name we pray. Yes. If you look at your uh, bulletin, it reads there, what the, how does it read? After this is a Latin, Superhang Petrum Adipicado, Ecclesia. Now, I think it was about it was about eight years ago, the first time we went to Rome with my wife and my daughter Joy. And then I was excited. Thinking about Rome, who could have been excited? I was excited for the fact that Basilica of St. Peter is there. That morning it was raining, it was pouring, but we were lining up together with all the rest of the people lining up. We were so wet, but nobody was intimidated by the rain. We were still able to get in to see Basilica of St. Peter. But then, another year had passed, I and my wife went there. That time, we did, not, we, we did not only enter the Basilica of St. Peter. But we managed our way going up to the cupola, to the, to the dome. And in that dome, you can go around and see all the angles of Vatican. But there's something that amazed me so much. And what amazed me is this inscription at the ceiling of the dome. And part of that inscription is Super Hand Pictrum Adipicabu Ecclesiam. Actually, it means, do you know what it means? It means, I will build a church on this rock. This is taken from Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 to 19. Now it reads, And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, have you wondered 
why would Jesus address Peter and not Matthew? Why Peter and not John? Why Peter and not someone else? Of course, it was Peter who just conversed with him. Remember that Jesus asked, Who do you say that I am? Who do people say that I am? And then he said, Oh, you are John the Baptist, or you are Elias, you are Jeremiah. And then he said, But what do you say who I am? Who was the person who answered? Peter. Peter answered, You are the son. Well, what does it say? He said, You are the Christ. In verse, let's go to verse uh, 13. Uh, no, verse 17. And Jesus answered him. No, no, no. Uh, Simon Peter replied, verse 16. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So that Jesus directed his talk to Peter. And he said, And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, take a look at this. Jesus himself built the church. Amen? Amen. Are you excited? No. Jesus himself built the church. And he said, but, please listen to this. Other people said, other churches said, that Peter was that first? Paul. Oh. oh. Is it true? No. No. I have been to, I have been to uh, the, the prison cell in, in Rome. It was there that Peter was killed and Paul, and they were beheaded there in that place. Now, if he was the Pope, why was he persecuted? Actually, the Roman Church established about 200 years after that. So that it was not founded. You know, if you go there, you can see a lot of names listed as the first pope, second pope, until the, the, how many popes there were. I cannot even be right. But I like to say this. What does Jesus mean when he said, I, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church? Now, by the way, where was, when did Jesus say this? Do you know where did Jesus say this? What place did he say that? Come on up. Come on up. Anybody? It was not in a courtyard. It was in Caesarea Philippi, or Philippi. Americans call it Philippi. But, you know, that Greek and Hebrew is Philippi. Now, he, we were in Caesarea Philippi. Let me, let me just say this, that there are two Caesareas in the Bible. The first Caesarea is Caesarea by the sea. It is where the governor's palace was located. We have been there many times. It's so beautiful. The coast of Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea. But all the hills, near the Hirvon, Hirvon Mountain, there is what we call Caesarea Philippi or Philippi. The, local, the locality is called Banias. It is where Jordan River started. It's amazing that from the foot of the Mount Hermon comes the river, and it's going through, starting from there, it becomes the Jordan River. It's so clear, it's so clean, it's so fresh, it's so cool. But when you go to the Jordan, it's a different story, it's another color. Now, why, why is it, what's the significance? Have you thought, what's the significance why Jesus said, I tell you the word Peter, and upon this rock I will build the church. Why? What is right there? What's the significance of this Caesarea Philippi? Or Philippi? Now, Caesarea Philippi is a place so famous, it was kind of a metropolis by that time by church goers. Because in that Caesarea Philippi is located the Temple of Pan. Have you heard of the Temple of Pan? No. 
What's the meaning of pan? Are you familiar with a pan bleeding? What does that mean? In, in Greek, pan means all. And it says the temple of all, what does it mean? Because everywhere you see, there are, there are, uh, there are altars dedicated to different gods. All the gods are located there. So those who worship the goddess Diana will worship there. Those who worship the goddess, whoever it is, who see you will worship there. Everybody. So when Jesus and the disciples came to Caesarea Philippi by that morning, they could see the chaos going on. They could see the, the smoke coming up from the from their sacrifices. And it seems it is the center of civilization by that time. And Jesus said, take note on this. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What, does, what did he mean? He was trying to say, Peter, I'm telling you, I will build a church that these gates of hell, he was calling that place hell. These gates of hell will not prevail against the church that I will build. That was what he was saying. I will build a church that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, do we understand what's the meaning of church? Because we are told in Ecclesiology that there are three types of church. One type is Bethel, and it is headed by the Pope. The second type is Congregational. It is by the brethren. The third type is representative. Where do you think Second Adventist Church belong? Where do you think? No, we are not in the congregation. We belong to the representative type of church. Because in the Second Adventist Church, the people, the members, are the most authoritative members of the church. We chose our leader. No wonder every five years, Ohio Conference gathers all the delegates, and these delegates are voted in the churches who will become the delegate, and then they would elect who that would become the president. And that's the reason why every five years, we will be meeting in a general conference session. Every five years. Because every five years, at this time, it would be in St. Louis now. Next year, St. Louis, Missouri, all the delegates from the different parts of the world will meet there. And when the session is, got, it is started, this is the highest voice of the church. The president, or the directors, or the treasurer for that matter, would only would only obey what is being agreed on the council. In other words, it is the voice of the people that should stand. And no one would be above above it. Now, in the union, in the in the in the division level, they are also they have also their own constituency and they are all represented from the churches or from the conferences. The same is true with the conference and the same is true with the church. That's why in our church, we have a church board in the church. Who composes the church board? All the, the ill officers of the church. And this board will decide on everything. You know, I have been a pastor for the last 40 years. Sorry, I look, I, I, I'm old. <laughs> but it's always the case that whatever the church decides, that will prevail. And that will be do. So that everything that we, we, we do is backed by the, by the minutes of the church board. Meaning to see that we are a representative type of church government. That is what we are. And I would like to say that we are also 
Gaburin as a church, worldwide church. Now, I have, I have gone to the churches in Lima. I cannot understand because they are all Spanish. But I know what comes next. Because we have the same pattern of church programs wherever you go. We have been to Paris, we have been to Egypt, we have been to many parts of the world. We have been, I, I had attended a, a church in uh, uh, East Timor, in Indonesia. I cannot understand the language, but I know what's coming up. And I can understand also the songs because they're related only that the words are different. You know, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is a church that is worldwide. We are covering 209 countries in the world. We are the most representative church in the whole world. Next to us is the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church is in about 134 countries. The difference is that we are many, we are few. But what I'm trying to say is that we are a global church. Because as a church, we have, we have the mission to preach the, 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 the gospel message to all parts of the world, in every tribe, in every people, language, so that we are going to every parts of the world. Now, if you want to see how universal, how global the Seventh Adventist Church is, you attend the general conference session next year. And you will see the different people. You will see different sizes, different, you know, sizes of the face, and, and the, you know, they are tall, they are short, you, you can name it. But it's so important that we as a church, we are patterned this way because this is represented also in the book of, of the Pentateuch that there were representations from the captains of the thousands, captains of the hundreds, captains of the fifties, and captains of the tens. This is the model that the Adventist church had followed. But I want to ask you this, are you happy that you are a part of the Seventh Adventist church? Are you happy? Yes. Now, when you say that you're not happy, you are not convinced that you are a part of that church and you are happy about it. There is no enthusiasm. Are you a part of the event with this church? Yes. 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 Uh, it sound really yes. happy. <laughs> are you happy that you are a part of the event with this church? Yes. 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 That's what I was looking for. <laughs> You know, I started to attend Sabbath Civil Adventist Church when I was five years old. I was five years old. I grew up in a Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I like to tell you this. I was baptized as a Seventh-day Adventist Church because I really believe that the Seventh-day Sabbath is true and the church is embracing the Seventh-day Adventist, Seventh Sabbath of the week. But I need to tell you this. Why is it that I'm still a Seventh-day Adventist today? You, you might think, that's a ridiculous pastor. As a pastor, you should be a Seventh-day Adventist. Don't you know that a lot of pastors are leaving the church? But no matter what, I understand why is it that I am a Seventh-day Adventist. There's nothing that could take me out from the church. If I will tell you what had happened in my ministry. How many times, you know, you are kind of not supported. Many times, you know, you feel you're betrayed. But I know that the leader of this church is God. And whatever happens to me, it's only kind of, there's a part of it. But it's not the whole story. Because I know, and I can tell you, that I understand from the 2,300 days that this is the only true church. You're not excited about it. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this I can tell you. 
I have studied so well the 2,000 days. And because of this doctrine, I could see where our roots had come from and how it came up. And I know that the story of the Seventh and the Jews is biblically supported. And because this church is also backed by the spirit of prophecy. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you this, that you are in the best place. You belong to a church that belongs to God. And it's up to you to hold on to God, to Jesus, and to be faithful in the calling and in the profession of the faith that you have. You know, this no matter, no matter how what I do, I don't know if you have known this uh, editor of the Sabbath School lesson partly. He was a Jew. He was an atheist. He did not believe in the Bible. But when he started reading the Great Controversy and studying the 2,000 days, he was convinced beyond a doubt that there is no other church because this is only telling us that our roots are coming from the Old Testament and we are still here and we are growing up and we are finishing the work of God. Have you noticed that we are a church, that we are the only church that is really engrossed in bringing the message to all the world. I have been to many places in the world. I have seen many churches. And this is what they said, that there are only two most organized groups in the world. The first one is the German army. And the second one was the Seventh-day Adventists. And they said, wherever you go, you can find a Seventh-day Adventist church. It's not that big, but it is represented. Now, okay, I have 15 minutes more. Pastor John. Whatever you Okay, now, it says here, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter. Others said that Jesus was saying he would build his church on Peter. Do you agree with this? Does the text say he was building a church on, on Peter? How do you know? You know, the word Peter comes from the word Petros. And Petros, it means a rolling stone. When you build a church, when you build a building, will you build it a rolling stone? No. With us, the other word is Petra. And the, the word used in this, on this rock, I will read my church, is Petra. Because Petra, it means a boulder or a rock, a big rock. How I wish you were in Petra. Because Petra is a city in, in, in Jordan. Petra is a very big, reddish rock, solid. And Jesus was saying, on this rock. But what, what do you think the finger of Jesus was pointed? Was it pointed on Peter? No. You know what? Towards himself. On this rock. Because he was saying, I am telling you, you are Petros. You are a rolling stone. But on this rock, I will build my church. Because Jesus is the foundation stone. It means then that Jesus will never be destroyed. So that he said that even the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, what is most important to you. But for me, my connection with the church is more important to me than anything else. Because this is the connection that will take me to the heavenly kingdom. Now, let me tell you this. That the church, that the church is coming from, do you know what you know of the original name that's translated as church? Huh? Ecclesia. Now, what is Ecclesia mean? How is it? What's the derivative of Ecclesia or the word church? The word church comes from the word Ecclesia. Ecclesia is a compound word. Ek 
And kalio that becomes ecclesia. Kalio is the, 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 the verb. Now, it means to call. A is a preposition, meaning out of. So that the church is a people, not a building. Are you, are you, are you following? Yeah. Yes. Is a church a people or a building? People. The church is a people, not the building. But you know, we have this, I will read to you something that has been mentioned by Ellen White. Uh, it says here, from the Greek controversy, as the minds of the people were turned away from God to fallible, erring, and cruel men. Nay, more to the prince of darkness himself, who exercised his powers through them. When the, when the scriptures are suppressed, and man comes to regard himself as supreme, we need look only to for fraud, deception, and debasing iniquity. And then it says, they were taught not only to look to the Pope as their mediator, but to trust to works of their own to atone for sin. And what happens? Long pilgrimages, acts of penance, the worship of relics, the erection of churches, shrines, and altars, the payment of large sums to the church, these and many similar acts were enjoined to appease the wrath of God or to secure his favor, as if God would like men to be angered or tripled or classified by gifts or acts of penance. Now what happens? If you read in the Bible, can you read the word church? Yes. For example, what church can you read? What church can you read? Oh, the church of Laodicea, right? The church of Ephesus, the church of Smyrna, the church of Sardis, the church of Kirkamon. These are churches. I have been to that seven churches vicinity. Only see are remains. But don't you know that the New Testament church were not buildings? What did Paul say? Greet to me the church of the living God meeting in the house of Priscilla. Meeting in the house of Aquila. So in other words, the church are people meeting together in a certain place. There were no erected churches or the Christian church before. Only the big church. The Catholic church has a big church. But for the people of God, there were no churches built. The building of churches were kind of, it is a, it is a, a facade actually, made by the church so that people, when they see a church, they would feel it is so great, so big, so vast, that you feel so small and insignificant. Now, if you go, for example, to Basilica of St. Peter, when you go there, it's so magnificent. It's so gigantic, gigantic. And so, it's so, as if you're involved by the majesty of the building, that you feel lost inside. So the center of your of, of, of your of the awesomeness that you are feeling inside of you is not about yourself, it's not about God, but it's about the building that's engulfing you. In this way, our sympathy, our attraction is, is transferred from God to the building. And this is what we are trying to do. So that we need to understand that when God, when Jesus said, on this rock I will build my church, he was talking about people connected to him. So that first Peter 2.9 that was read today, what did it does that, does that, was, what does that say? But, come on now, what, 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 what does that say? But you are a choosing generation. Is it referring to people or referring to buildings? But you are a choosing generation, a royal priesthood. What else? A particular people. What else? What else? What else? Royal priesthood. You may proclaim the praises. No, not yet. There are four things here. 
You are a chosen generation, a real priesthood, a holy nation. Now, what's the enemy that uh, that took to mind? But you are a chosen generation, a real priesthood, a peculiar people, a chosen uh, holy nation. His own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. So here it is. These people called holy, called peculiar, called priests, nation, called chosen people, they are the ones that compose the church. Where did they come from? They are the ones pulled out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's why Ecclesia pulled out of darkness into a marvelous light. So we are people that we need to be connected to Jesus because Jesus is the chief cornerstone. In other words, whatever we do, it should be about Jesus. Whatever we say, it should be about Jesus. How we relate to people, it should be about Jesus. However we act in church, it should be about Jesus. You know, when we come to a church, we need to feel His presence. You know, what's the difference? Between a church and a club. A club is a place where people go there when they are bored at home. They would like to enjoy the club. Just enjoy. But a church is a place where you have to go because you would like to hear God's voice talking to you. A church is a place when you come there every week. In order to be, to, to, for each one of us to be reassured that He loves us, that He forgives our sins, that we have felt His presence just blessing our, our minds, blessing our heart, and blessing our, our, ourselves. So that we need to understand that when we, are, when we are in the church, His presence is with us. We need to understand. I don't know about you, but how many of you have been to a court? How many of you have been to a court? Court? A court of law. Yeah. Yeah. When you are in the court, now I, I was a pastor, there was a case involving our church there in, in my place, so I went to the court. And it, you know, the, the hearing was going on, and I was just kind of sitting like this, slouching, <laughs> and the belief came to me. Sit there. You might be put to prison without any, without any ter uh, terms of when can you get out. You have to respect to the judge. In the presence of a judge, you have to pay respect. <coughs> and that's what I'm trying to say. In the presence of God, we should pay respect. Because if we believe that God is here, you know, we should be this presence. And whatever we do in the church, it should be that something that would elevate Him. Something that, it should not be about us, it should be all about Him. Because we serve a God that loves us, we serve a God that died for us, so we serve a God that would <coughs> do something for us, because He would come to take us out of this world. And by the way, the church is, the church is illustrated in the Bible. As pictured as a human body, actually as an as a building. Now, how many how many bodies you have? One. One. How many parts of the bodies you have? Two. Many. You have hands. You have nose. You have face. You have teeth. You have feet. You have everything. But they are all one body. And this is the this is the the description that Peter had had for his for his people and, and Paul has for his people. In in in, in Romans twelve five, Paul says, So we being many are one body in Christ, and everyone members one of another. So that when you come to a church, we feel that we're the same with another. Of course, we don't do the same things in the church. But it doesn't mean that we do the important things and others do the least important things. Every one of us are important in the church because 
you know, what's the most important part of your body? Heart. Your heart. Okay. What else? Brain. Brain. The brain stops your death. Okay. Well, what else? So that when we function each other for the church, that church is healthy. And this and Peter and Paul says that you are one body and the head is Jesus Christ. Amen. So in other words, Paul was addressing to people, not to buildings. Of course, we meet in a building, but this is not a church. The church is us, people who are saved by grace, by God. Jesus came to save us from the penalty of sins so that when we responded to him, to his love, to his appeal to us, we become part of his body so that we become a church. And then, Peter said that the church is also a building. We are just like these stones built together to become a one edifice. Now, when Peter was talking about stones, his mind was always in Jerusalem. And when you go to Jerusalem, when you build a house, they are all made of stones. Because Israel is a place of many rocks. In order for you to plant, what will you do? You have to gather all the rocks and plow the, the soil without rocks. And then out of these rocks, you build your house. And Peter says that we are just like lively coals joined together to become a church. In other words, you and I are important segment of this church. It means that you and I have to act and behave and have to contribute to this church so that this body will function so well. Now, that's why 1 Peter 2.5 says, He also has lived with stones and built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer our spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Now, as a rock, Jesus is the rock. If you read the Bible, he is pictured, he is uh, depicted as the rock of ages. You, that's a rock that's a shelter in times of storm. So in other words, when Jesus says, on this rock I will build my church, referring to himself, he was trying to say that through me, in me, as the foundation stone, out of me, I will add people in the kingdom through me. You and I will respond to the call for you to understand and accept Jesus as your Savior. You are attached to the Church of Christ, a living church, so that this church will never be defeated. This church will prevent even against the gates of hell. So that brothers and sisters, this is what I like to say. Let us relate with each one. Let's try to help each one. Let's try to help the church. But whatever we do, let us see to it that is the church uh, interest that is being raised, that's being prevail that's prevails, that prevails, it's the interest of the church that's being our interest too, so that we can help build our church here in Harrison. Now, I don't know what people would, would or, or, or has, I don't know how people see it, or see this church in their eyes. Who we are. You know, I, I, in, when I was uh, working in a conference back in the Philippines, I have to go around four provinces because our mission office is composed of four provinces. And there are times I have to go to a church I haven't been to, and I would like to ask people. I would like to ask, uh, Sir, do you know of any seven death with this member here? Others would say, What is that? They don't understand what they are here. And then others would say, Oh, seven death, what is that? Because, you know, in the Philippines, if you call Sabarista, that's a common name affiliated with, uh, with us because we keep that Sabbath, Sabbathista. When you see seven that in this church, that is a more formal, legal name. And then, 
And then we will say, oh, this church, the church that keeps the seventh day Sabbath, that does not eat pork, <laughs> that will enumerate everything. Oh, I know, I know, I know. And then there are times that I have to ask, are they good people? And then, you know, you can get different answers. <coughs> Some would say, oh, I love these people because they are helpful. They share their food. And then, you know, they help us do our work. They are very generous, good people. And I would say, you know, I'm a pastor of the church. But there are times that when you ask, do you know a civil and English church member? Ah, what's that? That goes to church on Saturday? Yes. Uh, they are bad people. They don't pay their, their, their debt. They borrow money, they don't pay back. And I would never even identify myself. <laughs> but I'm trying to say this. What we do in church, that's what people say. And sometimes we try to give Bible studies and try to convince people about the truth of the Seventh Adventist Church. But if the church principles and teachings and doctrines had not changed our lives, if we had not changed in the way we live, this would avail nothing. Mm -hmm. Our mission as a church is to tell people about the coming King, Jesus Christ. But if what we see are inconsistencies in our life. You know, our claims are not substantiated by our works and our actions. They will be mixed up. They will be confused. And they would never understand. And they would never accept who Jesus is. But if they see that in our lives, we are witnessing for them because what we do, they are just what kind of, uh, it is a perfume. A perfume. They would like to be with us because they would like to smell the scent coming out of our lives. So, I think I just would like to say this, you know, this, this, there is a lady that works in a perfume factory. Every five o'clock, she would go home. And people would know if she passes by. You know why? Because the, the, the breeze that goes through her would bring the scent around of the perfume because she was working in a perfume factory. You know, when you work in a perfume factory, some of the scent of the smell comes to you. And as the air or the breeze goes through you, they would feel and smell the, the, the scent of the perfume. And this is what I try to say, that we are connected with Jesus. He is the perfume of life. So that whatever we do should be something that will tell people that Jesus is very good, that Jesus is a healer, that Jesus is a life changer, that Jesus transforms lives and makes miracles in our lives. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Jesus says, on this church, on this rock, I will build my church. This is talking about the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Because I could debate with you about the church, and there's no other name that would come out if you have to study all the doctrines of the Bible. But this church will come out. But this church will do nothing. Would be effective. It would not be functional if our lives are transformed and if people could not see that change lives to us that they would long to become like us, that they would long to become a part of us, that they would long just to be with us. Remember that, that Pimunia, after he was healed by Jesus, what did he say? What did he say? I want to be with you. Why? Because he was the, 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 the cause of the change in his life. How I wish that we will live our lives closer to what the Bible says. That Jesus will be seen every day because we love Jesus. It should be seen. Seen around us, even with the pets that we have, even with the neighbors that we have, it should be seen 
through us, through the lifestyle, and to the ways we help people and we talk to them. I don't know about you, but I am happy that there is a church here in Horizon. I just, I just uh, wonder this morning or this afternoon, as it's past 12, how many of us would like to say, uh, I would like to be a, a part of Harrison and make it better that people will know who Jesus is. How many of you would like to have that knowledge? Father God, you see the hands raised this morning and this afternoon. Oh Lord, we are happy that as a church, you are the one who started this church, built this church, and you would like this church, oh Lord, to continue on. I pray, oh God, that you will help us to be quite faithful to you. Let our, our Lord our lives something that will tell others that we have found the joy of living, found Jesus. That we have found the source of pure water of life. That we have found the source of life. And our lives have been changed because of Jesus' life in us. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will use each one of us to become a witness to others. That the purpose why we are called as a church will become a people, oh Lord that many more souls, many more people will come to know who you are and accept you as their Savior. I love each of us alone today to be prepared for the soon coming of Jesus. Let O God that whatever we do every day will be something for the witness of the coming of Jesus. Thank you the Lord for hearing our prayer and for granting us all the blessings. Thank you the Lord for helping us to be faithful and honest to you because we ask all these favors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The pastor, the lady that you knew that worked in the perfume factory, she saved a lot of money, didn't she? She never had to buy perfume. I guess so. <laughs> Closing song 99.
presence. And we thank you, Lord, for the assurance that you have given us today. That we are not just but people who are meeting for nothing. But you are the one, you are the God who has created, founded, and established the church, O oh Lord, where we belong. And that you have proven again and again. You have proven in our lives that you have taken care of us. We have been sick. We have been destitute. We have been hopeless. But, oh God, it is your life given for each one of us that have given us hope, O oh Lord, for salvation. And you have proven it right. And, oh God, today we put our hands and our, our, our hopes in you, knowing, O oh Lord, that your will will be done in our lives if we put your trust, our trust in you, O oh Lord, because you are our Savior. O oh God, please keep each one of us safe. Let, O oh Lord, this church will always grow. The church in us will always grow, oh God, because we would like to meet Jesus when he comes in the clouds of heaven. I pray, O oh Lord, for your blessing. Let your blessings be upon these people. The love of God, the, 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 the grace of the Son, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be upon each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Amen.